for a variety of reasons, and certainly one of them over the years and years and years has been uh, the representation of the United States Senate of uh, our very own Senator John McCain. Joining us this morning, Senator McCain, how are you? Fine, Bruce, and uh, congratulations on your <laughs> new assignment. We're proud to have you there. And well, thank lots you. Lots of people. You've got a big following, and uh, also our thoughts and prayers are with Daryl as he continues his recovery. Certainly so, and thank you for those kind words, uh, uh, both, in, in, and I echo the sentiments on, on, on Daryl. Um, Senator McCain, I wanted to, to jump in and, and talk a little sure. bit about some of the things that are going on. I a lot. Uh, yeah, it, 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 uh, it's a good time to be a talk show host, by the way, Boy, I've said. I'll say. We don't, we don't have to stretch for subjects very often. <laughs> Senator McCain, there is undoubtedly, and we have spoken about it here, a, let's call it an anti-incumbent wind. And, and, it, and it goes across both parties. Democrats and Republicans have been vulnerable. We've already seen some upsets. Tomorrow we could see some more in some of these mm -hmm. primaries. Oh, I want to yeah. be clear. You still have, and, and I'm, not, I'm not throwing you into that group quite yet. How's that? You have double-digit leads even on the poll averages and things. You're still... Yeah. I know you're out there campaigning hard as well. You should be. But are you getting a sense of this anti-incumbent fever? And is it fair? Um, I get a sense of the anti-incumbent sentiment, and it's totally fair. And it's exemplified, obviously, by the Tea Parties, but a lot of other things that we see around the country. Look, there's a disconnect uh, between Washington and the people. And that's got to do with spending. That has to do with out of control. That has to do with corruption. It has to do with... All the things that uh, we do here that totally and, and mainly you can wrap it up by we've committed generational theft by mortgaging our children and our grandchildren's futures. And uh, that frustration is uh, well warranted in my view. And we'll see. I think, you know, I, I don't like to predict these things, but I think you may see specter the defector defeated tomorrow yeah well i mean that's a i mean that's a coin flip right now over in pennsylvania we're going to find out uh but whenever an incumbent is in yeah. a close one like that they usually as you know ends up the other way but right you know it, look, it's a uh, blanche lincoln uh, the senator from arkansas she's kind mm -hmm. of getting attacked from both sides some people say that she will win but the one the most interesting probably as you know is in kentucky where you yep. have ron paul's son who's never run for office before for right. uh, running against a, uh, he's not an incumbent, but he is certainly the the party, mm, you know, what, choice. He's the yeah, Republican yeah, choice yeah. there in, in yeah, Kentucky. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, apparently that uh, Rand Paul's uh, his numbers are well ahead of his. And so it, it, it'll be very interesting. And uh, I, let me just say, I, I fought against pork barrel and earmark spending before it was cool to do so. <laughs> I was condemned by my colleagues. I was condemned by J.D. Hayworth for fighting against JD against earmark and pork barrel spending. I investigated Abram Moff. We put him in prison. Mm -hmm. We started the train that did that. I, I, I have fought against the earmark, pork barrel, wasteful spending, and I have stood up for Arizona, and I have fought for our bases, and I have fought for the men and women in the military, and I fought for those people like Boeing. And, and Raytheon and all of these other people that provide so much for our military and for our state. So I'm not just running on my record. I am running as to whether I can be most effective of anybody else to help the state through these difficult times. That's what this campaign is all about. Without a doubt. And, and, and yeah. Senator McCain, you certainly have, a, again, a, a, a long history. Uh, you, you, can't, you can't run or hide, if you will, from, from your, uh, uh, your record. It, it, you're not new to this game. This is uh, who you are and, and what you are. Having said that, I just want to get back to a lot of the folks. It seems like, you know, you want to say the populace is waking up. People are more aware. I remember uh, uh, seeing a clip from uh, Senator Grassley saying, you know, at the town hall meetings, he said, you know, he had people showing up with 300 pages that they'd printed off the Internet, quoting chapter and verse from pending legislation. He said, I've never I've never seen people like that before in my political career, that that they are more informed, the, the voters, than ever before. Having having oh, they're very, they're very well informed. Exactly. They're they're, they're, they're more more informed and more engaged because the anger and frustration level and pollsters tell me and I'm sure they do you too <laughs> that the intensity level mm -hmm. in other words of the anger of the voters is higher than they than they saw in 1994 when right. we had this this huge sweep oh no I mean, listen you're exactly right and then when the uh, attorney general of the United States after saying he would look into challenging in court the constitutionality of a law passed in Arizona, says in a congressional hearing that he hasn't read the bill. Right, right. You tell 
me, uh, you can't make that up. Well, we we get to immigration. And so you think people exactly. Are angry? Yeah. Uh, well, and and you can uh, again rightfully understand why people are are f- seem to be frustrated with the process as well, and it leads me to you know the process. I, I, I'm I, mm-hmm. I, I'm not. I, I hesitate because I'm not trying to put labels on you, but I mean, mm-hmm. you've been there long enough to kind of understand the way it works, uh, mm-hmm. uh, to That's say right. the least. And I fought against it. Yes, it, fair I enough. Never was elected Miss Congeniality. <laughs> <laughs> not going to win the popularity no. contest, and, and right now that's obviously uh, one of the one of the pluses, if you will. Having having said that, we talk about immigration. Has do you believe and help me understand as someone who is questioned? Uh, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to sure. be out there and open about sure. some of your stances. Have you? Do you feel you've been consistent on immigration and your stance on it? And if you haven't, if you if your if your policy and if your beliefs have changed, what what led you? What opened your eyes to maybe I need to adjust my position? Well, first of all, in 2007, and I'll be glad to email you all of these following facts, I said that we have to secure the border first. That was in 2007. Okay. And then in 2008, when I ran for president, I said we have to secure the border first. In 2009, I said we have to secure the border first, and John Kyle and I had a hearing that was last uh, April a year ago, uh, said we had to have troops on the border. So so let's, let's uh, try to – I keep trying to put to rest – this aspect that I have, quote, changed my position going back to 2007. I said we had to secure the border first. Okay. And I said that because I saw what was happening with the drug cartels and the violence on the border. Sure. 22,000 Mexican citizens have been killed in the last three years. We had three American citizens killed in Juarez. We had Rob Krentz killed. We had a deputy shot with an AK-47. Mm-hmm. The violence I saw coming, and I said we've got to secure the border first, and we've got to work with Mexico, and we've been trying to help them. Right. But as you know, the corruption level is is incredibly high. I worry a great deal about the next election in Mexico if they elect a president that's going to say, let them just pass through, as was the case in Colombia before Uribe and the work uh, we right. did with them. So um, we have to end – and I also learned from the Iraq war that you can use surveillance techniques, which were highly sophisticated, including UAVs, as well as personnel to pursue the information you get. And in integration of technology, fences, people, and surveillance, you can secure our border, and we must secure the border. So, again, um, I, it, it is absolute, absolutely false uh, to say that I have, quote, changed my position okay. since 2007 on the border issue. Fair enough. And uh, yeah. and, and there and there it is. Uh, uh, now, yeah. having again, yeah. it, it appears that... Uh, here's the argument. I'm going to make the argument, sure. and, and, and I could make this argument. How's that? Sure. You and your colleagues in the Senate and, and in, in, in the House, mm-hmm. this has been an issue for a while. What, what, why would I think that now the Congress of the United States is going to get serious about immigration when it appears that there's no political will, and I say this respectfully, mm-hmm. on in either party to deal with this? It's become this new third rail of politics. Uh- I don't. I can't guarantee you. I know that there are many in this administration. The president's budget called for actually reduction in the border patrol. And you've been down there, Bruce. You know how badly they need additional personnel. That's why we called for the National Guard. But there is a there's a renewed awareness in this country when they read about you know two days ago a, a groom nephew and brother right. i believe yeah they went in a wedding dragged them out and they they found their bodies uh, yeah. a few hours later the, uh, one of the leading uh politicians in mexico um was just kidnapped right. uh there's growing awareness of the level of this violence and it's spilling over onto our side of the border and by the way we could spend time talking about the virtual fence the right. 3.3 billion dollar contract let that completely failed a total failure right. unbelievable when you think about it uh, they spent 770 million dollars which completely uh, wasted but I believe that over time we can convince our colleagues and friends because you know that those human smugglers that smuggled them up from yeah. Tucson and to Phoenix in the vans they they were then dispersed all over the country and there are other states as you know that are considering the same law that that was passed by the Arizona legislature and if I could make a comment about that for the president of the United States to say 
that the law in Arizona said that if you wanted to go out and get an ice cream cone, you'd be harassed without even reading the bill. Right. I think, I've never seen anything quite like that. Well, I mean, it's it's demagoguery. Uh, there's it's no totally doubt about demagoguery. it. Uh, yes. Senator McCain, you uh, m- make a great comment again in about 1070, and I can take by that that you certainly uh, support the uh, the concept of it. Uh, I've made... I, I, I support the bill because it's a frustration that people and in our state have about the federal government's failure to act. Now, maybe, and there's other states that are considering doing the same thing. Right. Uh, maybe with this kind of pressure, we can get uh, that done. Can, uh, can you understand, again, my skepticism? Play along with me. I that, understand. That the federal I can, government... All I can do is present right. with the facts. Well, I, I get it, but that yes. the federal government, if the federal government got a hold of 1070, let's say, yes. and came up and crafted and, and, and modified some sort of uh, uh, national immigration reform... I, as an Arizona citizen, knowing what it's like on the ground here, am concerned that the watered-down version, if you will, would do nothing for what we have. Now, ha- Bruce, ha- let me just yeah. remind you. Let me just interrupt. Thing. This, the, the Arizona legislation largely reflects Correct. existing federal law. The right. question is: Is are you going to enforce existing federal law, and are you going to give them the wherewithal to get our border secured? You right. see my point? Absolutely, absolutely, okay. totally, totally agree with you on okay. that. Totally, uh, and and again, you know, it's mm-hmm. about it's about enforcement and the federal uh, government's refusal <laughs> to ref- yeah. And it's going to come down to states' rights. I really think that at the end of the day, this is going to be: Does the state of Arizona uh, uh, have the ability to enforce that law? I think it has nothing to do with skin but color. The problem is, I want them to be able to enforce existing law. Yeah. But they've got to have the assets from the federal government to secure the border. It is not the state's responsibility to secure the border. It is a federal responsibility. Right. And that's why John Kyle and I are working as hard as we can to try to get this 10-point plan implemented in a broad variety of ways. We are working on these pending legislation to try to get parts into it that would implement the 10-point plan that in the view of most law enforcement people would get the border secure. Fair enough. Senator McCain, I know you're, you're busy. And I, just mentioned, oh, I know I know we got to run, but li- when when people complain, could, uh, could I just give two numbers that, go ahead. Uh, that, that I don't think the liberal elite in Washington, <laughs> uh, inside the Beltway, and Manhattan understand. One, 241,000 people apprehended, illegal immigrants apprehended on the Tucson border. Last year, you catch one out of five. That's over a million people, okay? Mm-hmm. People's homes and their property are not safe. The second one is over 1.3 million pounds of marijuana were intercepted again in the Tucson sector last year. The people of Arizona deserve to have their lives and property secured just as these inside the Beltway Manhattan limousine liberals have theirs. Fair fair point. And I want to end with this and, and, and sticking kind of a, the adjunct off of a little bit of, of 1070. What, what would you say and how would you counteract the people calling for boycotts, whether it's the Los Angeles City Council or some of these other uh, cities and states who, quote unquote, refuse to do business with Arizona? What is I the noticed that I noticed that uh, both uh, Los Angeles and San Francisco are broke. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> second thing, uh, do you still like our water coming over there? Do you yeah. like our power coming over there? Should should you boycott that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and third of all, look, do you want to hurt Hispanic citizens? Do you want to harm them? They work, a lot of them, in our h- hotel and tourist industry. They're hardworking people. They're, they're, they're many of our Hispanic citizens will be hurt if you try to harm the economy of our state. I just hope you would have some empathy for them. Yeah, well, Fair point. And Senator McKean, thank you for joining us today. Uh, congratulations, my friend, and I know you're going to have a lot of fun. Oh, I will. Especially well, uh, in this season. Sir, yes, sir. <laughs> sir, yes, sir. And we hopefully want we'll a chance to talk to you more. Exactly. Thank you. Have a wonderful day, sir. Thanks. Bye.